All right. Hi, guys. Today I have Lindsay Mitchell here with me. She is the founder of Vital Side, which is an amazing program to help people to retrain their brains, reclaim their lives. I'm going to throw that one in there and uh, just move through any chronic symptoms they may be feeling, whether it's anxiety or any kind of chronic symptoms relating to their health. So, Lindsay, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you for having me, Bianca. No worries. We are going to have a little short, snappy interview here with Lindsay today. Uh, Lindsay and I actually met a year or so ago. Not even that. Uh, we spoke at a an online conference um, for retraining your brain. And we really resonated because we both have this very playful, lighthearted way of creating real shifts in the mind and the body. And that's what I want to get into here with Lindsay today. So Lindsay, um, uh, and also guys, if you want to see Lindsay's official and proper bio, feel free to look at the captions or the description on this video so that you can learn more about her. But we don't have time to get into all of it right now. But Lindsay, do you want to share a little just a snippet about your journey coming from being diagnosed with Lyme's and how you found brown brain retraining? Sure. So my journey with wellness started out because I'm a medical practitioner. So my background is internal medicine. And I started working with a lot of people who have chronic conditions. Well, along the way, I was bitten by a tick and diagnosed with Lyme disease. And at that point, I had been trained in Western medicine. So that was kind of my, my go-to thought of, okay, this is how I should treat my disease. And quickly found out that I came across limitations when it came to treating Lyme disease. There were other kind of symptoms that I was experiencing that I just didn't have the resources for in my own training. So along with that chronic condition, I had symptoms of anxiety and fatigue and migraines and all of these different symptoms. And the tools that I knew that I had and that I had learned and studied, you know, weren't really dissipating these symptoms. So I came across brain training on a blog post that I was reading. I think a lot of us just find information on social media posts or blogs. And I read about how the brain changes when we have a chronic illness, which made so much sense because when we have a traumatic event happen to us, whether it is a chronic illness or, you know, a psychological, emotional, mental trauma, our brain goes into this protective survival response and communicates that to the body. And that can show up as inflammation and sensitivities and hyperreactivity. So that all really resonated with me. And <laughs> You know, I, I picked up the brain that changes itself and, you know, Norman, Dr. Norman Deutsch's studies and started to delve into the brain retraining neuroplasticity world and ended up doing a few programs that, you know, focus on this myself. And I quickly learned how much power we have in our brains to make changes to our bodies. And one of the first things I noticed was brain training happens all the time. We're always changing our brains, but it does take a very structured way to retrain our brains out of this chronic stress, negative feedback loop. So I started studying to be trained in neuro-linguistic programming, the emotional freedom technique and thought field therapy so that I can kind of have some of these tools and I created Vital Side, which is now, you know, about four years later, kind of attracts the intuitive brain retrainer who's kind of looking for a structured program. But once that flexibility and once that playful element, like you talked about, and also once maybe a little bit more personalization and what's something that fits in with their life, because 
you know, after recovering from Lyme disease and using brain training really to heal my symptoms, I found all of these wonderful ways to retrain our brains and we're doing it all the time and it can be fun and it can be a process and we can have support and structure and all of these things needed. Um, but yes, it can be an enjoyable, pleasant journey for the most part as well. So that's kind of what I bring to the table when it comes to brain training. Yeah, totally. And I love that. And I think one of the things that I loved when I first spoke to you and found out a bit about Vital Side was that while you have a structure that it's not regimented, it's not about being hard on yourself. It's really about doing the things that work for you in that personalization that you mentioned before and just a little side note guys Lindsay and I are working on something together as we speak um, that's about elevating your brain retraining so stay tuned for more details on that in months to come uh, what are some of I want to hear about you like what number one where's the situation where you realize hmm I want to change the way I'm thinking or feeling. And number two, what is one of your go-to techniques that you use to elevate your practice? Yeah. So this is a good question. And, and specifically, I'll talk about me today because, you know, me eight years ago would be totally different. And when you are stuck in that chronic stress response, the techniques that you use can be a little bit different. So today, um, you know, we're always training our brains. That's a process. That's a cycle. So I always tell my clients, you know, even after healing from that stress response and limbic system impairment, we have choices daily. And sometimes we choose to do the thing that makes us feel good. And sometimes we choose to do the thing that gives us a bellyache. And that's okay, because it's your choice, right? So, so that choice is so important. Okay, so to answer your question, for me today, um, I, I, you know, I think being aware of your routine and your patterns is so important. So I'm constantly practicing metacognition and paying attention to my own thoughts and also my daily habits. So something that I noticed actually at the beginning of the pandemic was I would get a bit lethargic in the afternoon and I would just kind of go into this little bit of a slump. And it's funny because I've got a stand up desk. I have like all the tools and you would think I'd be able to kind of quickly change that. But I would kind of get into that slump and then I would like feel that slump and I'd be here and I'd be like working with clients. I'd be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so that is something that I did have to, okay, practice that awareness and do I want to change? So at one point I decided, yes, I want to change. So what I had to do was get really proactive about it. And I think that differs for everyone as to when they decided to be proactive about it. And for me, it came a couple months into the pandemic where I was like, you know, this is not something I want to deal with. So I have to plan it out. So every day now, for half an hour, I take off on my schedule. I think you've seen this on my schedule before, half an hour to dance. And it's in the afternoon. I don't necessarily finish my work day, but every day, half an hour of dancing in the afternoon. So I get my butt up and I go to the garage and I dance. I put on my healing playlist and I dance. And even if I don't feel like dancing, I don't have to do this extravagant dance routine. I can simply move my body. But now that has become a, a routine, a habit for me a year later. So that's now something that I know makes me feel good. I know brings that sense of joy and vibrancy to my life and I can come back to it again and again. I'm all about little daily habits that mm -hmm. you can use to sort of elevate and shift your, your, um, your day. So that's something I do in my life. And then just a daily practice to have for people in this brain training process. So the first thing I encourage you to do is think out of the box. I love coming back to the question, 
what is possible for me in this moment? So when we're thinking about elevating our practice, um, we're thinking about adding to it or honing in on the things that make us feel really good or possibly discovering ourselves a little bit in this process and who we are today, connecting with that version of ourselves is so important. So coming back to the question, what is possible for me? So maybe you feel a little bit lethargic. Maybe you feel a little bit unmotivated or you know, something, right? It's the afternoon and you're like me and you're like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit slumpy. What is possible for me? And then that's a gentle approach to, to thinking of all the different possibilities. And then I encourage you to have a notebook nearby and write down all the possibilities, just kind of brain dump it onto a piece of paper. Maybe it's possible for you to excuse yourself from work and do half an hour of dancing. That's not always possible. What is possible for me? Maybe it's possible for me to lie down, put my legs up the wall and <laughs> lie there for a couple of minutes, right? Even one minute. What is possible for me? Maybe it's possible for me to sit at my desk and just shake my limbs out, right? Just change my state in that way, just like you use laughter to kind of change your state. So, mm -hmm. you know, offering yourself all of the possibilities, choosing what's best for you now. And at this point in your brain retraining practice, you can be discerning. You can find the things that work for you, that feel authentic for you, the things that you decide. Yeah, I love that. I, I also really love that question. What is possible for me? Because it's like, yeah, what is possible right now? Sometimes we're so shut off, like, oh, I can't do that. Really? Why not? Oh, well, yeah, I guess I could. And when you actually be honest with yourself and write it down, okay, what, what is possible for me in this moment? Like, there's a lot. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking about when I used to work in radio and I'd be really tired. I was working two jobs and I was on morning radio and I was the one who would like drive around in the car and give out the freebies. And before my segment, I would often sit in the car and I'd be like, and I knew nothing about changing your state, brain reprogramming, nothing in those days. But I would sit there and I'd be like, woo, 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 <laughs> before I went on air to like pump myself up. I only had a mm -hmm. second thing where I was on air when I was like, I want to be energized for it. I want to feel alive, but I'm in the car. Maybe it's raining. It's like in that, even in that space, I can have my own little like yeah. pump-up party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Changing that state because it feels good in that moment to do that. That's why, you know, a lot of people who speak or, you know, go to work or live life, anyone really has these little quirks, these little things that they do. I know before I speak at an, any event, I've got my go to song and I'll play it here in my office. Even if I've got like two minutes, I'll start out and it's actually the song from flash dance what a feeling oh. um it's like starts out slow and then it gets big and bright and that's my go-to because I get myself psyched up for the event and I always do it before my community calls too which is just so fun but yeah having those little quirks even if you don't know or, or these little routines even if you don't know why you're doing it something's changing because you're going back to doing it again and again and again yeah like, and I when I think of just anyone's life, like we all just want to feel good and, and enjoy ourselves, right? So if you can bring in these little pieces of magic, whether it's turning on a song, going and dancing, you know, having a shake out and revitalizing <laughs> your energy, whatever it is, that's what we want. And when you can incorporate these little things, I love how you're talking about those daily habits. It can be so powerful and shift our brain and body to the point where yeah, I have seen it in your calendar. It is there every day. The dance break. <laughs> I was like, oh, dance break. That's an interesting thing. She's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yes, I think it's so cool. Brain training can be fun, but train a uh, brain training can also help you discover who you are and connect with who you are. I think a lot of times when we use brain training, a lot of people that I work with. Um, come to me and they're like, I don't feel connected to my practice. I can't see who I'm going to be in the future or I can't 
I can't understand what it's like to feel joy. These types of questions always come back to the same answer of there's that disconnect between who you are today and this version of you that somebody maybe told you you should be or that you think that you should be, there's that disconnect there. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means that that particular process or visualization isn't working for you. So what do you connect with? You know, do you connect with comfort? Do you connect with, um, you know, satisfaction? What does that look like to you? So scaling things back. And then it's a slow, it can be a slow process of discovering who you are and what you do see for yourself and, and possibly what joy looks like to you in the future. But you start with where you are today. I think there's so many fun, cool, unique, different ways to start to connect ourselves with brain training and really make it a user-friendly approach. Yes, I love that. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm like looking at the time going, we could talk for another hour. On this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I know with our schedules, we're going to wrap it up here for today. Uh, if people want to find you, Lindsay, they should go to the Vital Side website. Yes, you can go there. It's vital-side.com. And you can also find my Instagram at my vital side. Yes, she's often doing really fun reels and all kinds of good <laughs> stuff on Instagram. It's a great account to follow. Thank you so much. And for guys who are interested, keep your peepers open and your ears open for what we've got coming up. <laughs> That's right. Bye. <laughs> Bye.